I got a question. If you are not doing what you love, why aren't you doing what you love? All right, let's kind of get adjusted here. All right, there we go. Let's shed a little slight on the situation. What's up guys? Let's have another little conversation. Many of the people right now are quitting their jobs to go off and to do what they love. Okay? To do what they love, to do what they want to do, to enjoy what they do. I've got a question that I asked at the beginning of the video. If you're not doing what you love, why are you not doing what you love? That's a serious question. I've got a few theories of why you're not doing what you love. And the first theory is you don't know what you want to do. Because I am seeing all of this angst and the great resignation and all these people are quitting their jobs and they're moving on to greener pastures to do something bigger, bolder, deafer. <coughs> Excuse me. And I am curious to what is this thing that people want to do? What is this thing that people want to do? Because I'm about to say something that's going to sound elitist, but most of the people that I come across are not remarkable in any shape, fashion, or form. And this isn't to say that you're not special as a creature of God's creation. This is to say that to me, my opinion, that most of the people I come across are not remarkable. They've done nothing, they've created nothing, they've built nothing. They're just average ass people. And I'm seeing a lot of average ass people demand to be treated as if they were exceptional. Let me run that back again. I am seeing a lot of average ass people want to be treated as if they are exceptional. If they are bringing something unique and special to the table. Because I'm about to share some, I don't think I've ever talked about this before. I've been doing this YouTube thing for 12 years, going on 13. And you wanna know one of the things that I really enjoy? I enjoy talking, I enjoy communicating. I really, really enjoy it. And who knew that I could make money just talking? This is how I make most of my money. Just talking. That's pretty special for me because I enjoy communicating. I enjoy communicating concepts and ideals with people. And this gives me the ability to generate income. I like it. I really, really like it. And going way back into my origin story, you know, with Marvel Comics and the Avengers, there's the origin story, like how did they come to be? And I think this would be my origin story because for the longest, I wanted to be a writer. And as a kid, I had a great love of reading. I read 4,000 books from the first grade to high school. Yes, I kept track, I was a weird little kid. And I enjoyed reading, I enjoyed the written word, I enjoyed communicating. 
And this has lended itself to me being an educator, communicating and teaching. This all is wrapped up in the same little ball of stuff that I like to do. I actually enjoy creating YouTube videos. I enjoy creating online courses. I enjoy communicating with you guys. I thoroughly enjoy this. And th this is one of the things that so many of y'all miss. You want to do what you want to do, which is everybody. Everyone wants to do what they want to do. But what is it that you enjoy doing? There's a difference between doing what you want to do and enjoying what you do. And the difference is huge. Because how many times have you done something that you wanted to do and then later upon reflection, you're just like, eh, I really didn't want to do that. I really didn't enjoy that. Dozens of things, countless things that you will like do this thing or have this experience. And then after you've tasted the experience, you're like, I don't really like how that tastes. I really don't enjoy that. And this is a constant ebb and flow theme of life of people doing stuff and not really enjoying it because it's something that they wanted to do. They wanted to do it, but they didn't really enjoy it because it was a new experience, right? So this is one of the things that people consistently consume are new experiences and they do things and then later after they have consumed the experience they're like eh, that's not for me and after consuming all of these experiences what have they come across that they like to do what have they consumed that they're like that's tasty i want to do that some more and this is one of the things that you have got to do is work on yourself to figure out what you enjoy. Because I guarantee you, if someone came up to you, you would be saying some stuff like, I enjoy fine dining, I enjoy travel, I enjoy, you know, the, these, these things, right? But like me, I don't, I enjoy traveling, but two or three trips a year, I'm good. I don't have to, for me, the constant being away from home, living out of a suitcase is annoying. For me, me personally. But for someone else, they may love that. They may love waking up in a new city every morning. They may love that. And once again, it's up to you to figure out what you do that you enjoy doing over and over and over and over and over again. You think I could have did this for 12 years if I hated it? I want you to think. I've been doing this 12 going on 13 years. I've been um, creating online courses since 2014. And if I didn't like this, if I didn't enjoy this, this would suck. It would suck big brown monkey balls. It would suck horribly if I didn't enjoy doing this, if I didn't enjoy creating uh, the content, if I didn't enjoy creating, having these conversations, if I didn't enjoy this stuff, it would be terrible. I would be living in a prison. And this is something else. I cannot remember the last time that I woke up and I was like, I don't want to work today. I cannot remember the last time that happened. I cannot remember the last time that happened. I can't really remember. Actually, that would be untrue. In the car rental business, I had a few bad days. Like the day that I got that X5 back, it was filthy and trash. That was a bad day. The day that I learned that my Porsche had gotten stolen. So they claim before they sold it on Craigslist. Those were some bad days. But before that, I struggle to remember bad days. I really, and like I said, these are recent 
But once again, it's up to you to figure out what you enjoy consuming over and over and over again. Like I can eat pizza every day. I can eat chili every day. I will never get tired of some good chili. I will never get tired of that. And this is the thing. And the, while, I'm, while I'm having this conversation with you guys, is you got to figure out what is it something that you enjoy consuming frequently and figure out a way to monetize that. Because if you don't, you will forever be one of those people looking for a better opportunity. You will always be looking for something better because you're not happy with what you just what you're doing. You you will always be on the lookout for a better, more lucrative opportunity because you know, um I I don't really get approached with opportunities. I'm more important. This is this is how people approach me. It is rare that I get approached with someone who wants to give me a job. Last time that happened was like seven years ago. So that's not a normal thing for me. What is normal is every day I get someone asking me for money. <laughs> I get that all the time. It's like, hey, Glendon, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to run this business. We're trying to set this up and maybe you want to invest. I get that email like four or five times a day. I get that email. And honestly, I have no interest in being an investor. That's what's so funny about it. I have no interest in being an investor. I feel that I can take my dollars and put them to work and make more money than I could giving them to someone else because as an investor, I'm only going to get a small percentage of the return. Whereas if I create another business, I'm going to get a large percent of the return. I'm going to get like way more money. So that's that, that whole being an investor and putting your money here I'm not there yet. Maybe in another 10 years, I'll get there where I'll enjoy mentoring people and watching their business grow and watching them hustle. But right now, you know, with that thought, I am not ready to be a grandparent. I'm not a grandparent. I would probably have more children before I, come a, before I become a grandparent. That's kind of wild, you know, at the age of 54 to say this. I would probably have some more kids before I become a grandparent. And it's, it's, it's very different for me in comparison to my contemporaries, because many of my contemporaries, they have adult children and they're entering into the grandparent stage and they're visiting and they're watching the, the, the third generation come up and they're enjoying that. I'm not, I'm not ready for all that. <laughs> I'm not ready for all that. So I don't know what the future will hold. But once again, guys, if you, and this is the key to making money long-term, because this is something I talk about. I feel that a lot of the stuff that you see online is tertiary or temporary. Uh, like with these template businesses, there are many, many people that have a course on how to do Airbnb, how to do Toro, how to do Amazon FBA. And one of the things that has happened to Amazon FBA, which I predicted years ago that this was gonna to happen to Amazon FBA, it became saturated. And what's gonna happen with Toro and Airbnb and all these other things that people are doing because there's an opportunity to make money, they're not doing it because they enjoy renting out cars. now. On, on some level, I enjoy renting out cars. I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy it. So this is something I can do for a long term because there's certain aspects I enjoy. But if you start a business that just for the money, because you, 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 you're financially thirsty, financially thirsty, you want to make some money, you don't care what you do, how you do it, whatever you do to make some money, that's, that's kind of sad. Because what's going to happen if you get into a business that you don't really care about and you're just doing it for the money, at some point it's going to get old, it's going to get stale. It's like being with a hot chick, right? A hot chick 
that you like the way she looks, you like the way that you have sex with her, but you don't really like her as a person. At some point, you're gonna get tired of dealing with her. At some point, even if she's super sexy and she looks good to your friends, you know, at some point, you are going to get tired of dealing with her because you don't like her as a person. And that's the same thing that happens with business. If you get into these businesses and you don't like the business, if you don't enjoy the business, you're going to get sick of it. You're going to get tired of it. It's just like you're going to want to divorce yourself from the business. You're going to want to move on. You're going to want to do something different. You want to taste something else because you didn't get into it because you enjoyed it. You got into it because of the money. And this has happened to many women who married a dude who had money. They married a dude who had money, right? And after they've been married a few years and they got to know him and they realized, I don't like this guy. <laughs> I like his money, but I don't like him. I don't really, I'm not, I'm not on his, I'm not a member of his fan club. I like his money. I like what he can do for me, but I don't really like him. I actually like Tim the gardener with the big penis. That's who I really like. Now, if Tim the gardener has some money, yeah, I'll be all over that. And so that, that that's another thing that happens all the time that people will get with people for one aspect of that person's personality and they will not like or appreciate the person totally they just they just mm, like eh, you know he got money that's what i like and the same thing that many of you who get in these businesses for money and you don't enjoy the journey you don't enjoy uh the building of the business you don't enjoy the things that you need to do for the business uh it's gonna get old it's gonna get old like today Today has been a YouTube day. I've been creating content all day and I've been setting up stuff. I got this guy in this uh, vehicle behind me who's zooming, keeps zooming up on my bumper because he's in a hurry. But uh, hopefully this fool, ah, he turned. It's not going where I'm going. Cool. So I don't have to worry about any more zooming. Because one of the things is when I'm driving, this camera keeps shifting. It keeps dropping down. That's why I have to keep pushing it up. But once again, guys, if you are getting in a business that you thoroughly don't enjoy just for the money, that is not the key for long-term income production. And that's what you want to get into. You want to get into something where you, like, I see myself doing this when I'm 80. I can turn on the camera and talk when I'm 80. I can do that when I'm 80. This, this, this for me doesn't take a lot of effort. It doesn't take a lot out of me. Now, I will say podcasting did take a lot out of me. Creating an audio book did take a lot out of me because, you know, if, you know, people talk about doing voiceovers for audio books as passive income or, all right, here's the thing. When you do an audio book, at some point, when you've never done this before, your voice is going to get tired. Typically, what happened to me was I got tired of talking at about an hour and a half mark, because when you're having a conversation with someone, they're speaking, you're quiet. They're speaking. When you're constantly pushing out output, it starts to wear on you. For me, I'll speak for myself, it started to wear on me after about an hour and a half. And I had to shut it down. And I didn't honestly, I didn't feel like talking to anyone else the rest of the day. So I had exhausted my talking, just consistent talking. Because one of the things is when you create an audio book, I mean, you, you have to set it up in sessions. Like, you know, it took me about 12 sessions to complete the audio book. Because when you do a session, and you're gonna mess up, and you're gonna make mistakes, so you're gonna to have to do that part over again, so you're gonna to have to edit that out. That's why it took me so many sessions, because I was like, oh, this went crazy, the tonality was wrong. But once again, you know, just talking about content creation, putting stuff out, 
um, talking to people, representing, that is very much my jam. It's very much my jam. And guys, when I move, oh, 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 I can't wait to move. This building is so fancy. It is so fancy. And I just see myself doing so many new topics, having so many new discussions. And I am moving October 15th, me and the three cars. And one of the reasons I'm moving is my next house is gonna have a three to four car garage. I just, just, just me, I feel if you have fancy cars, you should have a garage to put them in. Just me, I know some people don't really care. Uh, some people out here in these million dollar houses that don't even have a garage and their car is in like a carport or something. To me, that's just, that doesn't make sense to me. But once again, you know, if you like it, I love it, you know. But one of the things that I'm getting ready to do is a new level of content. I'm getting ready to bring the drone back. I'm getting ready to bring a lot of stuff back. And what I feel that I, is about to come to me is I'm about to go crazy with content creation. I'm about to go nuts with content creation because there's so many things that I want to share with you guys. There's so many things I want to import, put, input into you and to teach you. So once again, hopefully you enjoyed this conversation. And once again, the price of the corporate papers goes up October 1st. So you want to go ahead and get in because I'm going to teach you how to set up a holding company. I'm going to teach you how to set up an operating company. And I'm gonna teach you, more, most important thing, is how to get customers. And this fool is just honking at me, so I'm gonna slow down a little bit more. <laughs> how do you like that? Since you wanna honk, I'm gonna slow down even a little bit more. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do for you. Ah, you, you're backing up, good, good, good. I don't know what it is with these people. <laughs> I'm like, it, it's kind of funny. Fool honked at me because I was driving too slow. That's interesting. I am seeing a lot of people with that 550 SL, which is my drop top convertible. All right, so I got to pay attention. I got to be, I got to look lively because I don't want to pull out and have someone ram me. All right, cool, cool, cool. But yeah, I got a lot of content com creation coming to you. And right now, the section that I'm working in, and once again, you join the corporate papers, you need to take it in sequence. You need to do the first thing first, the second thing, the second thing second, the third thing third. You need to go in that proceeding order. And yes, we will be having live trainings where I'll be answering questions, but do not skip over steps and just get into the customer creation, uh, the cu how to get customer stuff because here's the thing, and I promise you this is gonna happen. Right now, you don't have a business. This is the time to set up your corporate structure. This is the time to set up your corporate banking. This is the time to sell this because once you get into your business and you get busy, that stuff is gonna be hard to get a hold of. And then once again, I have a lot of people who have established companies who want to then create a holding company and they want to get into promoting and stuff and they they want to skip over steps like I, I, I'm telling you because as uh, we go through this process I'm expecting to have one of the largest tax refunds I've ever had the largest tax refund and I've ever had and I will go through that process in the corporate papers and I'll walk you through all of those steps so go ahead get in the corporate papers do this today because um, we only have a few more days before it's October and the corp price of the corporate papers goes up October 1st. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.